thanks everybody for being here. Um, <laughs> we're from Boston Scientific. Uh, my name is Mark Johnson. I'm actually a program manager, um, not in cybersecurity and not in infrastructure. Um, and uh, Joseph here is actually my senior tech guy that we've got. And uh, you're going to find our presentation is going to be a little bit different than what you've probably heard from before. It's going to be similar, but it's going to be a little bit different because we're just starting on our, our journey. And the reason I'm up here is a little bit odd, too. So we're going to get through that in just a minute. Um, so. Basically, what we're about, Boston Scientific is a medical device company, right? We make pacemakers, we make stents, we make pain modulation devices. We do all kinds of things that get implanted into the body. Um, we've got about, I think at last count, like 38,000 employees over like six continents. So we've got plenty of people out there, and we are global. Um, the reason I'm up here, you know, I mentioned that I'm not in cybersecurity, I'm not in, in, in IT. I actually was coming from a... Uh, mergers and acquisition group, but I had a VP come to me about two years ago and said, hey, we've got our business. We've got our cybersecurity and our security teams, and we've got our infrastructure teams, and they don't talk to each other, right? They don't know how to talk to each other. So what they did is they said, Mark, I'm going to take you. I'm going to plop you right down in the middle between all these groups, and your job is to basically communicate for these guys and look and see what you can find and what we need to do. And as we were doing this, we found out that, hey, we need an OT presence, right? We need, we need to improve cybersecurity. And so we started going down that road. Our presentation today um, is going to be a little bit about how we got to where we are today at our starting point, right? Because you might have heard quite a few people and different things saying it takes a long time to get movement. That's true. It does take a long time to get movement. So we're going to kind of go through what we found and some of our learnings that we've got from that. Um, so what we've got here. so. When we got into the role and we started taking a look, what did we have? What was our problem statement? What were we trying to fix, right? First one we've got is that we didn't have a global IT. We've got 20 some uh, operational sites out there. You know, we'll have manufacturing sites, we'll have distribution sites, we'll have sterilization sites, all starkly different. And what they do, the machines that they use, everything is really different. And so, and they were very much self contained, right? They were using infrastructure from the IT teams. But they were kind of self-contained when it came to security aspects and it was kind of secure to their policies and their processes, right? So when we got in here, the first thing we thought is, well, geez, let's try to kind of build synergy. Let's put them together, kind of build kind of a one global thing. And so that was one of the first things that we found that we needed to do. Um, and then basically, once we decided that that was the way to go, um, <laughs> we decided, okay, we're going to build an OT team. We need a definition because now you've probably heard this before in other conversations out there, but when you've got multiple teams, everybody has their own designs of what an OT team should look like, right? What does it do? What processes or what's the definition of an OT team? And so as I started looking into all that, we found that if we gave everybody everything they wanted right off the bat, it would never get off the ground. It's too big, it's too big to kind of launch as a full-fledged kind of an OT kind of team, right? So we're still building that definition, and that's where it's a little bit different for us here. A lot of these folks have got their segmentation plays in play and stuff, but we don't. We're just kind of just starting this journey, and uh, so that's what we're doing. Um, the cyber threat, yeah, that's a big deal, right? That's getting more and more prevalent, more and more dangerous for folks. And so that is one of the big benefits that we've had is that certain people that are out there that have to hold the money, right, the, the managers, the senior leadership, they're starting to see that the threat's real, right? So we spent a lot of time trying to prove it was real. Um, but, you know, that's always taken with kind of a grain of salt, you know. I always kind of make it akin to, like, fire insurance, right? It's like, hey, you need fire insurance for your house, and the first thing I'm told is, well, my house has never burned down. And you're like, well, okay, but it might. And then they say, well, it hasn't, right? So that's the kind of idea we've got. We've got to kind of prove out the idea that there needs to be cybersecurity, there needs to be an OT kind of a team to help manage through these machines separately from our infrastructure. Um, and the rest of these things, you can kind of read them. There's not a lot, there's just some kind of more common things here. The business keeps growing, they want to be more connected, you know, and so that brings a need for, for the actual, you know, the, the, the connectivity kind of problems and things that we've got. So, um, and then ultimately the same problem that everybody has is resources and money, right? Nobody has enough resources, enough money to build a brand new team right out of the gates, right? So right now what we've got is a very guerrilla, kind of small four-person team that's trying to get this OT operations group 
off the ground, right? So that's what we're doing and we're going. So um, that's where we're gonna go. Um, this, this slide is just kind of our path, kind of the way we've taken, the way we've gotten to where we're going, right? Um, and it's pretty, pretty straightforward, right? It's very simple. It's the same thing you've heard multiple times. You know, we've got a very minimal OT kind of a footprint right now. Um, and so we got down, we sat there and looked, we found our risks, we saw what we needed to do, we talked to people, we understood our environment. Um, and then basically, we explained that to whoever we needed to explain it to, and now that's where we're at today. Um, and so our next steps are going to be going ahead and try to implement and you know, try to measure and then sustain what we put into play, right? And so a little bit later down here, I'm gonna have Joseph get up and he'll talk to um, some of the tools that we're using, um, including Acronis, um, so for, for that purpose, right? Oops. So as far as solutioning here, um, I'm gonna let Joe get up here and talk a little bit about the global tools that we're talking about, and then I'll come back and I'll talk a little bit about some of the other programs that we're doing, and these are the same types of programs that everybody else is doing, but we're doing it all at the same time. So we're kind of have a lot of plates up in the air for Boston, we're not only trying to promote global tools, we're trying to put, do a resiliency play for our applications. We're doing segmentation across all of our plants, not just our operational plants, but all 130 sites that we have across the globe, right? So it's a big thing, and we're trying to build a team to support it as we go. So we're doing quite a few things all at the same time, which makes it a little bit interesting. But at that, I'm just gonna let Joe stand. Do you wanna talk there? You wanna stand up? Oh yeah, I can stand up. Okay, Joe's gonna get up, and he's gonna talk towards um, the uh, solutioning tools. Thanks, Mark. I'm Joseph Mortensen, uh, Senior Systems Administrator for Boston Scientific, uh, handling enterprise architecture as well now into this global OT program that is forming. Um, as Mark mentioned, it's a pretty small team, and we've uh, kind of had to prove the value of some of our tooling, which I'm going to talk, I'm, I'm happy to share with you uh, some specifics. Uh, one of the first key areas we identified was, you know, business continuity, disaster recovery strategies across the sites were varied or in some cases uh, potentially non-existent, right? Um, without a lot of manual efforts to stand up new machinery, go through the installation qualifications, et cetera. So um, I joined Boston Scientific about a year before uh, Windows 10 was introduced into our OT space. And that was a driver for newer tools, but that was also about the time global OT was being discussed as a concept among some of our leadership, as well as ourselves. Uh, so this was about the time, uh, like I said, uh, uh, natural convergence actually with those two uh, variables coming to play. So we started small, Acronis served most gaps that we had from a security perspective, BCP perspective in a single product, uh, including uh, from a cybersecurity perspective, all five NIST uh, framework function areas, right? So um, very powerful tool, uh, not trying to promote, it's just um, we wanted to share some of the specifics and the, the successes we had with this tool. And uh, you know, we did have some sites struggling with uh, coming back from disasters, right? You've got legacy equipment out there. It's a matter of time before it has problems, not if it has problems. Um, and so we, we saw at just one of our locations about half a million dollars in cost avoidance, with, which with a lot of strategic initi initiatives, you're talking about cost avoidance usually. But um, that was a pretty big eye opener. Um, you know, we have a lot of other value propositions here with these other tools, but uh, this, this came about as part of our effort to prove the value to our upper, upper leadership. As Mark mentioned, it was uh, it's a bit of a journey. So yeah, that, that, that tool, uh, including just being able to give our technicians the ability to remote re restore from home, right, or, uh, around the time COVID was presenting some challenges for our industry, uh, for every industry, right? Um, so that alone, you know, the lack of having to dispatch somebody to the plant, uh, the downtime involved in manually recovering those machines, even, even with, a, with, with a tool like Acronis, being able to do that remotely and verify that it was completed successfully uh, was a huge benefit for our, our support groups. So uh, Acronis does have a booth right outside the hallway to the right. I recommend it. Uh, the, other, the other major area we were, we were struggling with was inventory, which is usually where you want to start out with. You need to know what you have, right? We hear it all the time. So uh, we, we, the, the challenge we had sourcing a product there was obviously our legacy equipment. You know, having something that was platform agnostic from a configuration management perspective. So we selected Broadcom has a product. They purchased Symantec recently, and this is where this product came from. Uh, ITMS, they call it, IT Management Suite. And it does patch management, software delivery. It gives us inventory, including customized inventory. Anything that's scriptable, we can rake into the CMDB, data connector in, into and out of other systems. And so that kind of give, gave us uh, crucial 
automation capabilities, not only within just the endpoints themselves, which is where I, I do focus myself. I'm, I'm more of a Windows you know, endpoint specialist. Um, but also with the data that we have in some of our other systems out there. So, uh, you know, being able to automate certain activities on some of the endpoints based off of other systems inventories, other data points, um, very powerful for, for automation's sake. Uh, so we spent about 10 weeks implementing that at one of our largest sites for the company, largest manufacturing sites. And uh, we res it was about a 93% um, return on our investment immediately after we implemented, and that doesn't include all of the other uh, capabilities that that gave us, uh, scripting capabilities for our site teams. And, and as far as the implementation concern is concerned, it is important to stress that uh, a key strategy for us was making sure that our OT teams were given the capabilities. You know, we weren't just dropping something in and then forcing different changes on their environment, right? You can't do that. But um, it has involved a level of, of training, communication, building relationships. Uh, we've heard that a lot too in this, in this conference. So. Uh, crucial inventory, right, for us too. Hardware, software, file system level inventory to know what we have going on out there, including communication into and out of various ports of these machines. Um, help us paint a better picture of what's actually going on out there. Uh, and then, obviously, remote access. Uh, Dameware, remote everywhere is the solution that we selected. Um, simply because, again, we have so many pieces of legacy equipment. My focus has been more of on uh, some specific endpoint types, and so there are some limitations with the solution. Uh, but we are looking at other, obviously, other tools to help us uh, augment that. But this is a, a remote control tool that gave us uh, majority coverage for our endpoints, for our identified use cases, which ended up being three use cases, external partners, very, very big use case for us. We've got vendor equipment, obviously, you know, we build a lot of equipment ourselves, but we have vendor equipment that we have to purchase, you know, specialty equipment and stuff. And uh, rather than having vendors come on site because their remote solutions were maybe blocked from a cybersecurity perspective, which is pretty common in our space, um, we could give them a solution that was vetted by our security that we had control over and allowed them to remote in. Uh, the other use cases were internal support, right, our own engineers, remote controlling different systems across the plants, something that, we, that, that wasn't very mature um, in 2022. So, uh, and then thirdly, supplier support, right? We do support, uh, support some of our suppliers, the computer system they have at their locations, or sometimes we send some of our testers out to their locations as well. And uh, instead of having us send our engineers out to various places around the globe, that capability was important for us uh, to allow them to do that work remotely. So uh, for Dameware, we did see about a 300% ROI for current adopting sites. We do still have a ways to go here. Um, yeah, we've got about 20, 21 OT t uh, sites around the globe. We've only touched a fraction of those right now. But as Mark said, this is still forming, and uh, I'm, I'm just happy to share some of these tool sets with you guys. Um, if you do have any questions about any of the technical or the tool sets, obviously I'll be up here. Um, but uh, yeah. Hand it back to Mark. <laughs> Thanks. And one of the things, too, that, that we could talk about with Joe is that um, when we first started this journey, we didn't have, we weren't given keys to the car. We're, they were told to go out there and go out and entice the sites to kind of, we used the term adoption. We used what we called an adoption model, which is probably not the best way to do it, but it's all we had because we didn't have any, any teeth really in the game. So what we had to do is we went out for these tools and we went and said, hey, look, look at all the stuff we can do, look what we can get for you, look what we can do, do you want to be a part of this? And we did get quite a bit, we got probably about a quarter of our sites engaged in our tools, might even more than that, um, two fifths, something like that. We got, we, we got a kind of a good handle on some of these folks just by saying, hey, look at what it does, do you want to go out and buy it? And they did. Um, as of recently, as we've been able to get our leadership, and one of the slides a little bit later will show that, you know, we, we had to get everybody on board because everybody has to get on board, but um, before we did that, we got kind of that adoption model, but they got on board, and now we're starting to kind of do a little bit more of a push mechanism towards these tools, get them out there, forcing them out there, force might be the wrong word, but getting them out there um, for everybody, you know, by design. So um, some of the other things we're doing here, too, like I mentioned, we've got a segmentation play that we're starting right now, um, that's across the entire population, not just our operational sites. Um, you know, we're, we're using smart switching and things like that. We're putting firewalls up. We're doing lots of things like that. That's just starting as well. Um, it's going to be a very interesting play because you do need to get buy-in from various levels of different sites, especially um, and when you're talking about the business. You'll have your senior leaders in the business. You'll have your site-level leaders in the business. 
and then you have all the people that are actually doing the work on the ground. And you have to basically get out there and communicate to all these groups because they all have to be on board and they need to be communicated differently. But So that makes it kind of a unique challenge. Um, the app resiliency piece, that's just basically the same thing. It kind of falls under the thing. We're trying to make sure that we have, you know, we, we can have good monitoring for our, our applications. We can have some high HA and then we can have DR in case everything falls apart. Those are kind of the three tenants we use for our resiliency. You know, there's other parts to it too, tech depth, things like that. But these are all different applications and different uh, efforts we're doing around to make ourselves more secure. Um, and we're working with our cyber teams, we're working with our security teams, we're working with our infrastructure teams and the various site um, operational teams that exist today. Um, the OT team that we're talking about is global, and I don't think I mentioned that before. We do have operational teams site by site, but they do kind of operate independently of one another. And so what we're trying to do is come in and put some global governance over the top of that um, to kind of drive consistency with the sites. But um, again, and this is kind of just shows, this is just a fluffy uh, slide that kind of shows that everybody needs to work together in the group to kind of get the picture to look good. Um, you know, you've got your multiple groups and I know you hear over, over and over again that communication is key and getting the players involved early and often is important because everybody has to buy off. There's always a lot of people involved, especially in a bigger company, um, that needs to buy off on it. And that's not always an easy thing to do. So um, this particular slide is just out there to show that that's what we're all working together now. We're all kind of focused, moving one direction. Um, still got a long ways to go. So I think somebody mentioned that it's a long, long pull in the tent. It'll take you know, five, seven years probably to implement these things, but you got to start. So if, until, you, until you actually start, you're not going to get your clock ticking. So um, that's just what this is all about for that. Um, benefits, and again, this one is just kind of setting up what we've got here. So, you know, Joe talked about a lot of the value that he had. We, we, we have a system of, they call it VIP, where you can get kind of realized savings from things. It's not quite ROI, but it's come more of a savings thing. And you talk about like, uh, you know, um, uh, you, there's various things. There's the cash one. There's um, what'd you say, Joe? That one of those was. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's basically there's certain certain savings that you can get in the system, and that's how you kind of generate revenue, so you can actually move forward or get uh, people to pay for what you need to have done. Um, but the one key that I want to say to this thing, communication is huge, um, and and the big thing too is. If you're going to start thinking about building an OT or getting cybersecurity into operational space, start right away, do it now, because basically it's hard, it's a hard get. Um, the uh, operation teams, they don't want the train to slow down at all. They want that money train to keep on rolling. There's no downtime allowed. Um, and so basically you need to work with these teams very closely so they understand both A, what you're doing and what it's going to benefit them, um, and then how long it's going to take and that type of thing. Um, but anyway, other than that, that's kind of all we've got um, for our slides here today. Um, we'll be up here to answer any questions that you've got. Um, so that's it. Thank you. Okay.